Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today I'm going to talk about art theft on the internet. Originally, I got interested in this topic when I heard that LuLaRoe steals artwork for their leggings and stuff. And then I heard some of those same accusations being hurled at a company called Redbubble. Both of these are two specific businesses. One is an MLM, the other a company that just essentially sticks an artist's work on t-shirts, mugs, hats, pillowcases, you name it. But the whole controversy and climate around art theft is, well, it's really messy. And I thought it would be something worth talking about. I know I can't possibly get to every single case today, but I will talk about a few notable ones from businesses to individuals. So let's start with one of the companies that sent me down this path to begin with, Redbubble. Now to start, I think Redbubble is a neat idea. It's a way for artists to put their work online and there's some really cool designs out there for all sorts of fandoms, animes, and the like. I mean, hell, one of my admins recently opened a Redbubble shop and I had to buy something obviously because I want to support my admins. But one question that plenty of people have asked is, will they steal my art? Or more specifically, will they allow individuals to post art that they don't own and make a profit? We know that starving artists and small creators can't afford lawyers, so there's no shortage of stories from large corporations turning a blind eye to this sort of behavior. Even Disney's been accused of it. So what about Redbubble? Do they promote art theft? The answer isn't exactly black and white. They don't actively promote taking a screenshot of your favorite artist's works and trying to sell it, but what they do to stop it may not be enough. On their site, Redbubble states, in response to the question, what if a user of the Redbubble marketplace is infringing on my rights? They state, don't just scream, I declare infringement into the sky loudly. We may not hear it over at HQ. Seriously though, Redbubble follows a takedown process modeled after the process set forth in the US Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA, which provides rights holders the ability to issue takedown notices and the alleged infringers to counter claims of infringement. To learn more about our takedown and counter notice process, please read our IP and publicity rights policy, which can be found here. Now, I did go through that policy and it states, we ask rather than beg that users remember to only post their own original artwork. They go on to list how it's against copyright, trademark, publicity rights, and fair use laws to claim something as your own when it's not but because they legally cannot provide individual copyright, trademark, or publicity rights advice, well, it seems like all they can do is just take something down if someone complains, which let's be real here, it's a system that puts the burden on the artists themselves. Artists shouldn't have to constantly monitor the web to see if their work is being stolen or throw watermarks on everything to avoid that problem. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great things people say about Redbubble and they're far from the only company with this problem. It's just how little Redbubble has done in some cases that's turned quite a few heads. For example, one article said that this little sloth drawing had been ripped off not once, not twice, not three times even, but on 43 separate occasions. Avi, who represents a local art crew called Silver Sprocket, contacted Redbubble about the design. According to Avi's letter to Redbubble, I've appreciated your team removing the infringing designs when I've sent emails about it, but the exact design has now been removed 43 times, and I hope you can understand how exhausting and upsetting it is to keep seeing other people profiting off our work over and over again on the same website. And let's be real here, there's really no excuse for that. Is there no review process of the art that gets submitted there? Because by that point, Redbubble should have a poster of that sloth over their desk because one, it's adorable, and two, it could stand to be a reminder to stop fucking approving that design and selling it by random people. Now, a couple times, perhaps it slipped through the cracks, okay? That, you know, maybe I can give the benefit of the doubt there. But over 43 times from the same, like, website, really? Really, Redbubble? Some artists like this one from DeviantArt had their artwork stolen, but taken down rather quickly. And I'm thrilled for them. That is absolutely fantastic. The post got 9,000 views, so it seemed like they had quite a bit of support backing them up. And keep in mind too, that when I'm saying art was stolen in this case, I truly do mean that the original design was copy and pasted and put up for sale with someone else's name on it. This isn't the case of the artwork looking similar or one artist inspiring another or doing that thing where you trace over the art or whatever. Like it was outright theft in every sense of the word. So even though this case was black and white, obvious theft and was taken down quickly, I still wonder how much money the art thieves made in the process. One artist goes into detail on The Daily Dot about the process he's faced with sites like Redbubble, where he's legitimately sold his work only to have it stolen by art thefts on similar sites like Teespring. 
Chris Rees is another Australian designer locked in the Sisyphean cycle of fighting uphill to get one work removed only to have a fresh avalanche of piracy tumble back down. Like Frosdyke, Rees noticed the problem sellers whose names unhelpfully aren't included on their Teespring pages, seem to rip his most popular designs off Redbubble, the platform where both artists authorize legitimate sales of their artwork. Redbubble also advertises which of its vendors sell items the best, perhaps giving pirates an idea of what's most profitable to steal. Chris only discovered he was a theft victim when he heard about the Teespring problem on Twitter and decided to check it out. He says he found other people selling around 30 of his designs on the platform, a total of 270 campaigns, and set about the time-draining process of gathering press clippings and documentation of his work, all the information Teespring requested to remove his original artistry work and to meet the claim requirements of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act DMCA. Teespring responded quickly, he says, and promptly took down the design. He followed up with an email linking to all the other examples of piracy he'd like removed. And a few days later, when Teespring said they'd taken down all the illegal copies, he assumed the matter was settled. That was in mid-May. Fast forward to June 10, when he took another spin through Teespring's pages and found roughly 90 campaigns using his artwork. He notified the site again, and they responded two days later, saying they'd scrubbed the pirated designs from the site. But almost immediately, he saw those products cropping up again. We saw Redbubble have this issue with the sloth, and I'm not surprised to hear that Teespring also has this issue. It must be disheartening for artists to think that a matter is solved and they've won and the art is taken down only for it to be on sale again less than a month later. Apparently, one creative way these artists have fought back against Redbubble, Teespring, and the like has been with designs that actually say, this site sells stolen artwork, do not buy from them, and advertising it as for sale on the website. And personally, I'm quite fond of the design and the artwork that's written across a smiling butt. It's adorable. Unfortunately though, there are far more cases of art theft in different contexts. One that I found personally upsetting is actually the case of artist Chiara Batista. Her sketches and illustrations are quite unique, gorgeous, and Chiara has become incredibly popular over the years, with cosplay and fan accounts cropping up everywhere of her work. She's known for being secretive and elusive and not selling her art. She doesn't promote it at all, really. And don't misunderstand me. There's absolutely nothing wrong with an artist promoting themselves. Everyone has to eat. However, she is an illustrator for the Arizona Daily Star. So these works aren't her full-time job, but a passion project. And I'm not saying that it makes it somehow worse when art thieves target her as opposed to artists that post and sell their art for a living, but it does prove how scummy these art thieves are, monetizing something that was, in this case, never meant to be monetized in the first place. Chiara Bautista, back in November 2015, called out Amazon itself for selling one of her designs on a wallet. Thankfully, in part due to her large following, it was taken down. Yet, what's telling about this post? She says her work was stolen again. Not for the first time, not how could this happen to me, it's again. Unfortunately, on Amazon, it's even harder to stop, one source explains. The majority of cheap items found on Amazon that feature artwork are unfortunately counterfeit products. Copyright infringement is a very serious problem as many artists, including myself, that once made a reasonable living creating the art accessories you enjoy are now finding their incomes cut in half because of unscrupulous companies like Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, and others. As a former Amazon seller and full-time artist, I've experienced this problem firsthand from the inside out. It's not a victimless crime. The online marketplaces are not innocent third parties and it does create starving artists and consumers have no idea where their dollars are going. It's sadly become commonplace at this point. Hell, it's even so well known that even Buzzfeed has called out Amazon and the issue is widespread and well known. Like it's that bad, like even Buzzfeed's talking about it. Unlike Redbubble though, Amazon seems a lot harder to get a hold of. Like I wonder why, right? Like on Amazon Seller Central, one user posted saying, I have found a seller at Amazon who is using one of my art pieces as a book cover. I filed a complaint and received an answer saying the description of your copyrighted work does not match the content you reported as infringing. This person is using my drawing, which even contains the address of my personal webpage right there in the image. I have owned that domain for more than 10 years and I provided a link to prove it. I don't understand how this works. She did receive a comment back that frustratingly enough, told her to go to the US Copyright Office for more information about copyright basics before reporting the violation again, and then encouraged her to get in contact with the other party. Like, yeah, sure, that's real fucking helpful. Don't get me wrong. Eventually, Amazon said they would remove the item once the user said they provided more proof, but what kind of response is that? Like theft will happen, and I'm not suggesting Amazon can stop everybody, but how little they seem to act is infuriating. 
One book illustrator, Susie Garmani, spoke with Robin Young and their conversation about the topic was published in early 2019 on WBUR. Here's what she had to say. It's incredibly violating. In one of the listings of my stolen work, the seller said they were me. It's on par with other types of theft, but in many cases, I have a personal connection with what I've made. It's very demoralizing. It's a nightmare to see the product turned around and ruined. Robin Young explains that Amazon does have an infringement claims public notice portal, but Susie says it doesn't work the way it should. I know that they know it's happening. It seems they should have figured out a solution by now. Instead, they have this extremely cumbersome platform. They're supposed to adhere to US copyright laws in the DMCA. They're supposed to take down infringing material when they know about it. But instead, they sort of act as an intermediary. They try to filter the complaints. I've gotten responses that say they can't verify my identity or we can't verify you're the copyright holder. They're inadvertently refusing tons of legitimate complaints from artists like me because they're trying to police their own complaint system instead of adhering to takedown procedure. It's maddening. Why don't they want their marketplace to have the integrity the whole world wants them to have? I can only imagine how frustrating that must be. Thankfully, I'm hoping things may gradually change for the better. It could be really naive to hope for that, but a federal appeals court has ruled that Amazon is liable for its third-party sellers, placing at least some burden on Amazon to act and prevent this type of theft. In July, 2019, the article read, Amazon has previously escaped liability for its vendors' products. Last year, a judge in Tennessee ruled the company was not liable for damages caused by a defective hoverboard that exploded, burning down a family's house. The plaintiff who bought the product on Amazon's site claimed the company did not sufficiently warn on the product's dangers. The decision on Wednesday related to a case in which a Pennsylvania consumer, Heather Oberdorf, purchased a retractable dog leash on amazon.com from a third-party vendor, the furry gang. While walking her dog in 2015, Oberdorf was blinded after the leash suddenly recoiled. Neither Oberdorf nor Amazon have been able to contact the furry gang. Amazon fails to account for the fact that under the agreement, third-party vendors can communicate with the customers only through Amazon, the ruling states. This enables third-party vendors to conceal themselves from the customer, leaving customers injured by defective products with no direct recourse to the third-party vendor. And I do have a two-part video about Amazon that I'm gonna get on very soon, and I go into much more detail about stuff like this, but since it affects today's topic about art theft, I figured I'd touch upon it again. But anyway, the point is I've seen this happen a lot over the years. Even Bernadette Banner, a popular YouTuber that makes clothing and discusses clothing history on her channel has some of her designs stolen and very poorly stolen and recreated, I might add. To add insult to injury, they've even used photos of Bernadette in the original dress she handmade and wore to promote their own product. So this happens everywhere and within almost every industry and no one's really safe. And by every industry, I mean every industry. And that includes, unsurprisingly, MLMs. Now, LuLaRoe is a company I haven't talked about in almost a year. And, you know, just because I haven't talked about them doesn't mean that I suddenly feel some type of good way about them. LuLaRoe has stolen artwork and can't believe those words are leaving my mouth. I know, shocking. I've criticized them multiple times in the past. And so to find out that the artwork that goes onto their leggings to make their designs, like some of it's stolen, it's just, I, it leaves me at a loss of words, like as if we needed any more reasons to believe that this MLM was terrible. One article from 2017 says this, Balaz Solti filed a complaint on January 19th in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California against LuLaRoe LLC, Leanne Stidham, and does one through 10 alleging copyright infringement. According to the complaint, the plaintiff alleges that he suffered damages from having his Cool Lion artwork copied. The plaintiff holds LuLaRoe LLC, Stidham, and does one through 10 responsible because the defendants allegedly distributed and sold leggings that bear plaintiff's artwork without his authorization. Now the lion, honestly, not a bad design, which is how you know it wasn't made by LuLaRoe, let's be honest here, but it's far from the only design they've stolen. Inc.com states, people who would never sneak into their neighbor's house and take their television set often have no problem stealing creative work. That's exactly what multi-level marketing company LuLaRoe did with its artist, McKin LeFeur's designs. According to Mommy Guyver, LeFeur learned of this when a LuLaRoe representative noticed that LeFeur's name was on the pattern. This wasn't because of some trendy desire for LeFeur to plaster her name all over her work. It's because that name was a watermark on the online version. LeFeur told me she isn't entirely sure which website LuLaRoe used to take her design, but her designs are available to be licensed without the watermark. LuLaRoe is a billion dollar company, so there's no excuse for not understanding how copyright law works. 
and firing and disciplining designers after the fact is not sufficient. They should be implementing checks before products are made. And LuLaRoe, unsurprisingly, just seems to make excuses for themselves because they've claimed to make 400 new designs a day. I've got no idea how accurate those numbers are, but quite frankly, I don't give a shit either. It's not an excuse. It may, however, explain how some of the art theft happens, but there is no explanation for why it continues. I get why the sloth design was stolen in the first place, but 43 times, unacceptable. Same situation with LuLaRoe. As Inc. said, yes, you need to discipline and fire any designer who steals, but you also need to ask yourself what you've done to create an environment where that is acceptable. What have you done to create an environment where a designer doesn't feel comfortable coming to her boss and saying, I found this design on the internet, I think we should license it. If the goal is quality products, the person who created the design needs to be compensated properly. And the person who found something appealing in someone else's designs should feel comfortable bringing it forward. LuLaRoe has done far more than art theft, of course. They're one of the most notorious MLMs I've talked about on this channel. So I'm not really surprised at all that we're adding art theft to the list of their literal fucking crimes, but it sure as hell gives you one more reason to hate MLMs if you needed one. A former LuLaRoe Hunbot, Mac, spoke about the artwork submission process in detail and even says that around the time their contract with Disney expired to use Disney properties in their designs, I'm assuming, LuLaRoe submitted 100 to 200 designs to them every single day when Disney requested no more than 20 to 30. Mac speculated that Disney just got peeved with being inundated with designs, stopped reviewing them, and let the contract expire. Mac added, in regards to stealing art, I found out from one of the artists that left the company that the art director had told them to get online and modify it a little. The artists that I know honestly work so hard and they do make their own art, but they all left in July, 2017. The art director was Brian. I would hear new artists get lectured by LuLaRoe and the new artists left because pressure was too much for them and they didn't like how every art was based on LuLaRoe's thought of what was popular. And I think this is theft, plain and simple. The art director wasn't telling them to get inspired by art that was out there, but to modify it enough to maybe get away with it. And that's it. I understand developing your own style can be difficult. And I'm not a painter or an artist myself, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. But it took me a while to figure out what I really wanted to do here on YouTube and for a while, I did post Reddit content like many other content creators still do to this day. And plenty of articles and videos out there address the topic. But for me personally, I'm of the opinion that if you are inspired by someone else and unintentionally create a work that's extremely similar to the point of copying that person, then you should just apologize, explain yourself and take it down. If you intentionally want to make a cover of a song or artwork that might be considered fan art, then as long as you credit the original artist and creator, I would think that's generally within fair use. But if you fucking trace an already existing design or copy and paste it onto t-shirts, leggings, whatever, then proceed to pass it off as your own, then you're kind of a piece of shit human and you really should be ashamed of yourself. But naturally, and like I said, that is my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me on that. So the real question here now is what can be done about this? We've talked about how pervasive this is on so many different platforms. So what is a solution? Well, I'm sure as you imagined, there is no quick fix and that's kind of a sad answer. One site says, you need to find out the definition of copied artwork, which may be given as a legal description or as a percentage of the total concept or surface cover. For example, more than 20% copied constitutes copyright infringement, whereas less than 20% does not. You will need to check your country's copyright laws to determine if copyright infringement has indeed taken place for each instance of theft. 100% duplicated copies usually do constitute copyright infringement, except for the fair use clause, which includes personal use, education, satire, critique, or other non-profitable activities. Remember, you automatically own all copyrights to your own work from the moment of creation. Also note that copyright law does not protect ideas, only the end result of ideas. For example, you cannot copyright a style or subject only in actual artwork. If you are in the United States and planning on actually pursuing any lawsuits in regards to thieves commercially manufacturing your artwork, you should make sure to register all artwork within three months of creation with the United States Copyright Office for a small fee. This does not protect your artwork any more than a copyright symbol does, but it can make a huge difference in getting attorney's fees and statutory damages covered by the infringer. Of course, this can get extremely expensive if there's a lot of art that needs to be copyrighted. And for the designs that are slightly modified, it can be a bit tricky too. But the site does have some other handy suggestions like watermarks and only posting low res images online so people are less inclined to use your image for commercial printing like t-shirts, posters, etc. 
Other sources write that not everyone has ill intentions. Sometimes these cases are simply a matter of people wanting to distribute some cool artwork and they don't realize the damage they cause. But unfortunately for the companies that do know and don't care, the burden of protecting the original image still falls on the artist. The solutions posted online are far from ideal when they exist at all. Frankly, I think when it comes to Amazon, Teespring, Redbubble, and the like, artists shouldn't struggle to contact them or to fill out their forms. If an image is taken down because it's copyrighted, then it should be put into some sort of database so they can't make the same mistake again. All in all, I just hope all of you artists out there are staying safe and that companies are being more responsible and for you guys to be a little bit more aware of how to protect yourselves and your artwork. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. So if you guys like this video or you learned something new, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for some more content just like this. And if you want more content from me, including the sources I use to create this video, my social media, or any of my second channels or projects that I'm involved with, check out my description box. Links for everything will be posted below. And of course, everyone that's worked on this project, they're credited below as well. So again, thank you guys for making it to today's video. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.